Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be discussing lesson 8.E, Growth and Decay. This is a very important, very long lesson um, that really does um, get into when you would use exponentials. And both, um, the pretty much they're opposites, but yet they go by these same rules. So what we're going to do is set up and understand the growth exponential function and then solve for missing uh, values in that function, okay? Then we're going to set up and understand the decay exponential functions, what they are, and then we're going to solve for some unknown space in those equations, okay? So we're going to first start with the exponential growths, and then we're going to go with exponential de de uh, decays. Ready? Let's get into it. In this lesson, we will examine different situations where quantities are either increasing, going up, or decreasing, going down, exponentially. So it's not a straight line, it's more of an exponential or a curve line. So they are known as either growth or decay modeling, and they occur frequently in the world around us. Typically, nothing is um, a direct variation. It does have some type of exponential to it. All right, now, here's an example. First example that we're gonna cover is growth. Now growth, um, some examples of this would be different populations of animals, peoples, and bacteria. They usually grow exponentially until they become limited by resources. What this means is, say you have we go like this. Say you have two people, all right? Those two people, they have two babies, right? But then you have two people over here, they have two babies, all right? And then eventually, people have more babies. See this person right here? They have two babies, they have two babies, they have two babies, they have two babies. Okay, so these two people, we'll start with these people, had two sets of babies that married people, had two babies, married people have two more babies, and then they just keep on growing exponentially. The same things with animals, okay? Um, if one person, has two babies, it kind of like mellows out, levels out. But if you have like say three babies, then all of a sudden it starts getting larger because you have three children for two sets of parents, so that's more. So it's becoming larger and larger, but you have a big number of people doing this, it grows up. And as it so happens, the world, the number of people in the world increases every year, except for this year. 2021 was the first year, 2020, was the first year the number of people in the world didn't increase. It might have something to do with COVID, but there's always different factors. And resources are a very big thing, especially with animals, okay? As they run out of food, as they run out of shelter and stuff, that's when they stop going up exponentially, okay? Um, they're observed in the value of items which appreciate over time. Appreciate means to gain value, okay? So another idea would be, say, you invested in, like, say, Bitcoin a bunch of years ago, okay? It didn't cost that much. But then all of a sudden, getting more and more money, and then a lot of people start buying it, and now it's worth a lot of money. Okay, say you bought a house. If you bought a house back in, say, the early 1980s, okay, what's that, like 40 years ago, you could have bought a house for like $10,000. Okay, now that same house could be worth like $400,000. It didn't go up in a straight line, it went up with inflation, a bunch of money. All right, decay is the opposite of growth. We observe it in radioactive substances, in the temperature of objects as they cool, or in the value of items which depreciate over time. So what happens with decay is, especially stuff like radioactive decay, what happens is you generally have an isotope where half of it decays over a certain amount of time, and then it's called a half-life. Half decays, half decays, half decays. So in decaying, it goes down exponentially. Okay? Depreciate over time, that could be something like a car. You may buy a car for $40,000. After a year, that car is worth like $35,000. But after like 10 years, that car's worth like $3,000. So it starts off going, okay, just lose, lose a little value, a little value, a little value, and then it's pretty much worthless. Right. So here's the deal. For exponential functions, y equals k times a to the x plus c. Okay? Now, that's like almost like a power function. a, where a, um, you have a, and you have k is greater than zero, so it can't be negative. N where A can't be 1, because if A is 1, it doesn't matter what X is, it will stay the same. Your growth means A has to be greater than 0. Okay, so anytime this number is greater than 0, it's positive, is growing. Anytime that number is between 0 and 1, it's decay. Wait a second. Greater than 1. Oh man, I checked that whole thing, and that's the one part I messed up on. The first easiest part. So if the growth is greater than 1, for instance, you can think of it this way. 1 is like 100%. Okay, 
okay? 1.01 is like 101%. So when you have 101% of an original answer, it's going up, right? Does that make sense? No? Yes? Oop, I just dropped some. Oh. All right, so if A is between zero and one, what that means there is that A is greater than zero, less than one, so A is indeed a fraction. All right, that's why it's there. So one half, half of something, a third of something, an eighth of something, all right? You get the point? Awesome. The next one. Next piece. Um, consider a population of 100 mice. So this is how growth works. I'm going to explain it to you very simple, and then we're going to move on. All right. So you have 100 mice here. Um, under favorable conditions, they increase by about 20% each week. So the number of mice goes up by 20% each week. To increase a quantity by 20%, we must multiply it by 1.2. Okay, the reason for that is this one right here is your 100%. That's you keep the same amount. This two is a 20%, all right? So you're adding 100% 20%, 120% is 1.2. So you take the original amount, 100, multiply it by 1.2, you get your new amount. Multiply that by 1.2, you get another amount. Multiply that by 1.2, and you keep on going up and up. So if P to the um, subscript N is the population after N weeks, then P to the zero originally equals 100, right? because you originally have 100 mice. And that's just the original population, however many mice you have. How would you find p to the first power, or p to the subscript one? You would take p to the zero, right? And you'd multiply it by 1.2, that's your multiplier. And that would give you 100 times 1.2, which would be about 120. Now, say we don't want, we want to skip this step. We just want to know how many mice are there after two weeks. Okay? Now, there's two ways to do this. The first way is to take the new one, which is 100 times 1.2, and what are we multiplying that by? By another 1.2. So 100 times 1.2 times 1.2 is 100 times 1.2 squared. Hmm, interesting. You guys seeing this? Let's look, say you're doing P to the three, right? You're going, um, okay, not after one week, two weeks, but three weeks. I would take whatever P2 is, right? And multiply it by 1.2. Well, what's P to the two? 100 times 1.2 squared. So what's 1.2 squared times 1.2? 1.2 to the third power. So P to the two would be 100 times 1.2 to the third power. So do you guys see the pattern? So what do you think? P to the N, N being any number, how would you find that out? Say I want to do, what, 15 weeks. How can I find that out? P to the N equals 100 times 1.2 to the 15th power. So pretty much what it is, and so on, is you're gonna take P to the N equals 100, your initial amount times whatever you're increasing by, 20% every time, to the N, where the N is the number of weeks. And then n is the set of what? All natural numbers. All right. Okay, and that is called a geometric sequence. All right. If you ever took um, pre-calculus, very big in pre-calculus. Now what we're going to do is we're going to handle this group. Now this is how we do this. We have a graph right here. However. When the population of mice must always be an integer, we expect the population will grow continuously throughout the year. Rather than, the reason I said natural numbers as opposed to integer is because natural numbers are just integers that are greater than zero, okay? Um, continuously throughout the year, rather than in big discrete jumps. We therefore expect our, um, it will be well approximated by the corresponding exponential function. That's a lot of words, isn't it? What does all that mean? 
what does all that mean? Well, what it means is, if we were to plot the points, so plot the last couple points. We had 100% times 1.2 is 120. All right, so then you can even do this in your calculator, 120. So then if I wanted to find out after two weeks, in your calculator, hopefully you got your yellow calculators, I just type 100 times 1.2 squared, and you get about 144. All right, if I want to go up another one, I can either multiply by 1.2 or do 100 times 1.2 to the third power. I get about 173. And then I can do it again, 100 times 1.2 to the fourth power, about 207, so a little bit above two. And you can keep on going up. I right, just want to do five and six again. Um, five would be 250. And then the next one would be about 300. Okay, a little less than 300. And as you can see here, there is an exponential curve. Now you may say, Mr. Valentino, that's just a straight line. That is not a straight line. That is a curve. It may look like a straight line, but look at it. If I was going to try to make a straight line out of this, see how it curves a little bit? So it's not technically a straight line. If I try to make a straight line this way, all right, if I try to split it and kind of go like this, you kind of a little bit better. But as you can see, it does have a curve to it. Right? Now, our formula is P to the n equals 100 times 1.2 to the n, where now n is all um, real numbers. Okay, so now they're going to say, okay, what if it's between one week and two weeks? Can you figure it out if it's a half week? Yeah. What about this? Yeah. And you can figure it out anywhere on this graph now. So you're creating the graphs, you're creating the problems in order to fill in missing information. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do an example, example number five, and then after we do this example, you can do a bunch on your own. Now this is a pretty long lesson, so it is very important that you focus. So example five, an entomologist monitoring a grasshopper plague, well that's bad, plague is where everything dies, notices that the area affected by grasshoppers is given by a um, n equals 1,000 times 1.15 to the n um, hectares, where n is the number of weeks after the initial observation. So really quick, um, find the original area, find the stuff after 5 weeks, 10 weeks. 1.15, what is it telling you is happening to the area affected by the grasshoppers? The grasshopper plague doesn't mean the grasshoppers are dying, it means they're infecting the land, all right, and it's the grasshoppers are the things that are killing everything on the land. So this 1.15 means, what are we doing? It means that we're increasing by 15%, right? So every week. So that means 15% per week. Do we need to know that? Well, it's just good to know that. So after five weeks, you go up 15%, 15, 15, 15, and 15, and then you can figure it out. You do it 10 times for this. So what is the original affected area? So how many weeks originally when you start off the original area is after how many weeks zero right original is when you start right how many weeks is that zero weeks right so that means that what n equals zero so a to the zero 1,000 times 1.15 to the Zero. What is anything to the zero power? One. One thousand times one is one thousand. So what does that mean? That tells us the original affected area was about a thousand hectares. Right? Now, find the affected area after five weeks and ten weeks. So use the same strategy to do that. And just so you guys know, um, a hectare is equivalent to about 100 acres, all right? So that's what they're talking about. So 1,000 hectares, right, would be about 100,000 acres. And an acre um, is about, 
about the size of like a house on land, like maybe two houses together, two properties together, it's about an acre. All right, um, they say what's well, about two and a half acres is about 10,000 square meters. Right. After five weeks, eight to the fifth, well, when um, n is five, 1,000 times 1.15 to the fifth power, pretty simple, it is 2,010. Okay, so what that means is the area affected by um, is about 2,010 hectares. Next one, 80 to 10, you plug it right in. 1,000 times 1.15 to the 10 is approximately 4,050 hectares. Right. Nothing really difficult about this, pretty simple stuff. Questions? Good. Now you're gonna do some on your own. Um, oh, sorry. We're gonna continue on with this one first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the graph. This is just from the first part. I just wrote it out here, so you'd have it. Um, you have a o a five a ten. All right. So that's the five weeks and the ten weeks and the zero weeks. I want you to plot these. This is your x. This is your y. All right, should be plotted. I plot it. All right, first one. Boom. Zero, 1,000. Five over, 2,010 up. 10 over, about 4,050 up. All right. It has a curve, notice. Once again, it's not a straight line. You're just curving it, just keep the curve going. Use your graph for technology to find out how long will it take the effective um, area to reach 8,000 hectares. So start with trying with your graph and see what you get as the answer. All right, we got an answer. Well, you go over from 8,000 to the point and then you're gonna transpose this down so this is between 14 and 16, which is approximately 15 weeks. So from the graph in C, it appears it would take approximately 15 weeks to reach 8,000 hectares, which makes sense, right? right? Next question, use technology. How do we use technology? We just plug them through the calculator, okay? So you can see where these two calculators meet, where these two lines meet, and using technology, the solution is about 14.9 um, hectares. You say, wait, how did you use that technology? Technology is easy, ready? Here's what I'm gonna do, come back here. Oop, let me turn this on. Bam, we're gonna use the same technology we used before. I'm gonna clear off this stuff. You can see I was doing math before. You go to your y equals, as we did in previous lessons. I believe we did this in chapter 10. Um, the first thing we're going to enter in here is um, the graph, which is 1,000. I did this in the last lesson. Times 1.15. Remember, this is the intersection. To the n. So we'll just turn the n into an x. Go down. And y2 is just 8,000. 8, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we want to know what x is and y is 8,000. We hit graph. Come on, we'll be on the last graph I did. See, I haven't done this in a while. It's not in my graph, so I gotta go to my window. Now from my window, I know that I'm going at 8,000, right? So my X minimum, negative three. My X maximum will say is 18. My scale is, we'll say five. I'll make the low scales. Y minimum, about negative two. That's all right. Y maximum has to be above 8,000. I'm gonna make it 10,000. My scale, I'm gonna make 1,000. I don't want a lot of dashes. All right, so here's my graph. Notice the graph looks, oh, it's kind of similar. And notice it keeps on increasing more and more and more the farther away I get from zero. And then here comes my 8,000. 
And do you remember the step we have to do here? We have to do second, second, calc. We go down to intersect. All right, click on both graphs and then click over a little bit at the intersection. And there we go. It says that my X is 14 point, what does it say? 14.87, eight, ooh. We can round that to 14.9. And there we go. Using our technology from the last chapter. See, I told you everything would come back. That's how you do that. All right. Let's move on. Anyone have any questions? Always using the lessons and building upon the lessons. That's what we're doing. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do problem number one. A weed in a cornfield covers the area of a t equals 3 times 1.08 t square meters after t days. Find the initial area covered. Actually, do that whole problem. All right, initial area covered, that's when t equals 0, right? So a to the 0 equals 3 times 1.8 to the 0 power. 3 times 1 is 3. So the initial area covered is 3 square meters. Why did I put meters squared? Because this is my units right here. By what percent does the area increase each day? So let's look. We have 1.08, right? So it's increasing because it's growth. The multiplier, that's called the multiplier, is 1.08. So in order to find out what it does is, what are we adding? 1 is 100%, right? So we're doing 100% plus 0.8 is the same as 100% plus 8%. So how much does it increase each day? 8%. Right. Find the area covered after two days, 10 days, and 30 days. Done. All right. After two days, where's my pointer go? Oh, wrong aside. A2, right? Equals 3 times 1.08 squared. That's approximately 3.5 or 5. Wait a second. 3.5. Um, oh, meters squared. I'm just messing up my numbers. I think it's 3.5. All right, a to the 10. I gotta do this. Now I gotta do this answer to make sure. Um, three times 1.08 to the 10th power is approximately 6.48, which is 6.48 meters. All right, times 1.08 squared. Yeah, that's 3.5. Not 5.5, I was right. Mm -hmm. Next one, a to the 30. All right. Got 30.2, 30 and 2 tenths. 30.2 square meters. All you're doing is plugging those in the socket. Remember, this is 3.5, not 5. All right, what I want you guys to do now is, oh, there it is, correctly. Plot these points, this is your X value, that's your Y value. Well, that's your, that's your T value, that's your A value. All right, now also very important, anytime A is greater than one, that indicates growth. Okay. So you should have been plotting up your points already. Let's go check out the points that you plotted. All right, zero, three, two, 3.5, 10, 6.48, and 30, 30 and two tenths. Graph should look something like that. All right. Um, use technology to do this graph and check your answers. So here's how you can check your answers. All right, I just put this right here to help out, make it easier. What you could do in your graph though, and you can use the graphing package to do this as well, is we have our graph right here. Y equals, I'm gonna clear both the things I just had, and I'm just gonna graph, okay? I am going to graph um, three times 1.08 carat X, right? So there's my graph. Now I want my window, enter, to be, I'm gonna do that same window, zero, I'll keep negative three to what's it 35 about 
35. Um, scale 5, that's fine. Negative 2 to about 35. Scale 5. All right, and then graph it. So now i got a cool little graph here. So the first thing is when A is 0. Where are you at? Come on. You could actually just move this, this over, all right? COX is 0 right here about. You go down. You're just going to estimate. On the graph, it says Y equals about 3 point um was that 3.2 so that's about right right move it down a little bit x is zero on the graph it's about three okay next one was say two three point five so i'm gonna go where x is two i get to about 2.03 go on my graph or you can actually just hit trace so you're always on the graph trace is probably better so now let's go x is two all right two is uh, two somewhere between here so about 3.5, then I'm going to trace up to about 10, and this is just checking my answers. Yes, I can type in and get, oops, sorry, I can type in and get the same exact answers. All right, so what do we got? Uh, X is 10. This is about 10. What do you see? Y is 6.45, 6.48, looks good. And then 30, let's go up, oops, sorry, let's go up to 30. That's pretty close to 30. And you see Y is 30.4, 30.2, pretty good. All right. Obviously, you can hit other buttons here. I can go to Calc, and I can enter in va actual values or zero it out to enter in what X and Y are. But we're just estimating. We're just checking our answer. We don't have to get super um, crazy here. All right. So the trace button is just a good way to check your answer. The weight of bacteria in a culture T hours after establishment is given by WP equals 100 times 1 point, uh, 1 in 7 hundredths of the T grams. Find the initial weight. So you're doing the same thing we just did with the last problem. We're going to do a bunch of examples. All right. One to the zero equals 1.07 to the zero. 100 times one, which is 100 or 100 grams. Okay, you should have noticed now, whatever number is here, the multiplier is always going to be your initial. Right? Interpret, or sorry, the multiplier, the number that you're multiplying, the multiplier by. Interpret, what does 1.07 mean? I'm increasing, I'm growing by how many percent? Should have said 7%, because 1 plus 0 0.07 is 100% plus 7%, so the weight is increasing 7% every hour, because it says after T hours. All right? Find the weight. You're going to plug this, this, and this into T. All right? So W of 4 equals 100 times 1.07 to the 4th power is approximately 131 grams. Right? W to the 10 equals 100 times 1.07 to the 10th power, which is approximately 197 or 197 grams. After 24 hours, W of the 24 equals 100 times 1 in 700, uh, 700 to the 24th power. Approximately um, 507 or 507 grams. Guess what? What we're going to do now is you're going to plot it. Plot them. Plot W0, W4, 10, and 24. That's it. You're just going to plot. And we're going to use technology to check. All right. So 0, 100, 4, 131, 10, 197. 24507, connect the graphs, and that's approximately what your graph should look like. All right, if you were to plug this into your calculator, once again, you would just plug in 100 times 1.07, carat x, all right, you hit the trace button, and then you just run this over with the x equals. You can also say find value if you want. Um, here, I'll show you how to do that real quick. Might as well, right? We've done this before, but... All right, so we're going to go back to y equals, um, what is this, 100, I'm going to clear this, 100 times 1.07 carat x, enter. All right, I'm going to change my window, I'm going to use the window that's there, x is from 0 to, what's that, 600, I'm going to go up by 100, just because I don't like dashes. Y is from 0 to, let's say, 30. 
going up by five is fine. So I got a graph right here. Hundred times one point oh seven to the x. My window is zero to six hundred. Oh, I did my windows wrong. Zero to thirty for my x window. Zero to six hundred for my y. Did it backwards. All right. So there's my graph. Looks like the one there. All right. Now, say you want to calculate this stuff. Instead of zeroing it out, you can just do second calc. And if you type in value, it tells you when x equals zero, what's y? Right there, y equals 100. Watch what I do, ready? Second calc, value. Now when x equals four, the answer should be 131, right? Hit four, 131. Second calc, value. When x equals 10, should be 197, right? There you go, 10, 197. All right, second calc, value when x equals 24. What do you think, 507? Pops up there, 507. All right, so you're just doing second calc and then you're just hitting value and that can give you the exact answer. All right. Another way to do this, I'm not gonna be doing that anymore to save time, but now you can know how to check your answers. Problem number three, a breeding program to ensure the survival of pygmy possums is established with the initial population of 50, which is 25 pairs. From a previous program, the expected population P in n years time is given by P at the end, um, equals P subscript O, this is zero, um, times 1.23 to the n power. What is the value of P zero? P zero is the initial amount. All right. So after how many weeks is the initial amount when n equals zero? So P to the zero equals 50. I'm oh, sorry, the initial population is 50. How do I know it's 50? Anyone? Because it says it, initial population of 50. Initial population, this is the same as P subscript zero. That's what that means. O means equal to 50. All right? Pretty easy, right? Now, I can actually find out what it is because the P of the O times 123 to the zero power equals 50. P of the O times one equals 50. Original population is 50. Got it? Boom, boom, boom. Now, what is the population after two years, five years, ten years? Go. So what we know now is p to the 2 equals 50, because now we know our new equation is p to the n equals, we have 50, because this is 50, times 1.23 to the n power. Right? 75.6. The next one, 76. we got 76 possums. You're going to round up or down depending on what it is. Fifty times one point two three to the what's going on here? There. Um, to the fifth power is about 141, or 141 possums. P to the tenth, 50 times 1.23 to the tenth power, approximately 396 possums. Okay. Any questions with that? You all good? Awesome. Wasn't that easy? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to graph. All right, so we have this information. Sorry, I'm trying to give you enough time and to go slow enough where I'm not running over things. We have P to the zero, 
all right? And we have all this other stuff, and you're going to continue to stop, go. So graph this real quick. All right, you graphed yet? The graph should have been 0, 050. Nope, because it's buffering. 2, 7.6, 76, sorry, 5, 141, and 10 and 367. And what you're going to do here, try your graph. All right, it doesn't say use the technology to check now. You can if you want, you can type it in and check it. Now the key thing is they want to know how long it will take the population to reach 500. So you are going to have to use technology for that. So I'm going to know when it's 500, how many years it's going to take. So you can't just plug in 500 into your equation. What you have to do is what? You're going to have to use your calculator. So we can use the graph. So if we use the graph, we're starting at 500. We go over to here and we go down and we're like, you know what? That's about 11. Right? So about 11 years to reach 500 possibles. But I want to be exact. I want to really be exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my calculator, which I put down somewhere in the sheet room, and I'm going to use technology. Now using technology, I know that P equals 500, right? So since P equals 500, I know then that my equation, which is 50 times 1.23 to the n, has to equal 500. So what do I have to do? I have to create a graph. Now, um, what you're going to do in your calculator, first thing I want you to do is you can do your window first if you want. I'm going to do my window. I know that x, and I just look at my graphs from 0 to 14. So I'm going to go 0 to 14 for my x. I'm going to make my scale. You know what? I'm going to keep the same exact scale here. Scale here is 2, so I'm going to make my scale 2. y is from 0 to 600. And the scale is about 100. All right, so the first thing I did was I made my window first. Do you have to make your window first? First. Of course not, but I made it just like the graph I have there. And I go to y equals. I don't want that yucky graph in there anymore. I'm going to use my new one. 50 times 1.23 up caret x. Make sure you hit enter. Now when I hit graph, it's going to go right to the great graph. Where I don't have to fool around with my window. All right, now wait a second. That's the graph, but I need to know when it equals 500. So I'm going to go back to y equals, and that's when that equals 500. See this? Enter. So now, aha, I can figure out where they intersect. How? I go to second calc, go down to intersect, and when they intersect, pick both graphs, just go close to that point, pick a point close to those points, and it says, okay, when y equals 500, when my answer is 500, on this graph, x has to be 11.1 or 11.1. And that, my friends, is the answer. Here's my graph. I did my intersection here. N is approximately 11.1 or 11.1 years. All right? A little bit more than a year and a month. That wasn't too terrible, was it? Look at this. You're starting to solve real-life math situation problems. Aren't this great? I'm feeling good. What about you? All right, let's go to the next one. All right, now we go to the next problem. The speed of a chemical, now each, the growth and decay each have about 10 problems, so we're about, not even halfway through half life. All right, so the speed of a chemical reaction is given by V of T equals five times 1.03 to the T units, where T is the temperature in Celsius. Find the speed of the reaction at the following. All right, so first thing, at zero degrees. What's the speed of the reaction? V of zero. Plug in zero for T. Because T now is temperature, not time. You can have different variables equal different things depending on what you have. All right, so five times 1.03, um, 1 the zero power is five times one is five. So it's five units, all right? Next one is 20 degrees Celsius. And sometimes you actually have to convert the temperatures you're dealing with on top of this stuff, which makes it really, really tricky. But we're good right now. So V to the 20 is five times 1.03 to the 20th. Okay. 
nine point here. So about 9.03 units. Find the percent increase from 0% to 20%. Now guys, remember percent increase, you should have done this, is going to be your, your new amount subtracting your old amount. So you take whatever you have now, you subtract your old amount from it, and you divide it by your new amount. So it'd be whatever this velocity is, the speed is, at 20 degrees, minus your initial velocity, the velocity is zero degrees, divided by the velocity at 20 degrees. And then you multiply it by 100. Hmm? You end up with 9.03 minus five, which is 4.03, divided by 9.03, and you get about 80.6%. Um, so that means the percentage increase in the reaction is approximately 80.6%. Questions? That doesn't seem like it works out there. One second, let me go check something out here. 9.03 minus 5 divided by 9.03. That's 44. Um, divided by 10, divided by 5. Ah! over your initial amount. Sorry about that. So it's V20, so it's your new amount minus your initial divided by initial. I knew that, I knew that didn't look right, but the answer is still the same. I just put the wrong work down when I did it. Man, another mistake. See, teachers make mistakes. This is what happens when I just made these things earlier this week. You get a little chance to check it. All right, so it increases about 80.6%. Speed of a chemical reaction is given by um, V of T equals 5 times 1.03 T units, where T is temperature in degrees Celsius. All right. Draw the graph of V of T. Against T. Okay. Um, when you graph this, you grab 0, 5. That's the only one we really have. And then you can just do an estimate. You can pick like 15. Um, I pick usually like another number just to make sure I'm on the right track. Um, if I did 5 times 1.03, um, to the 15th, I get about 7.7. .7. So this is about 7.7. .7. So I got two points, just run through the points. Um, you can also use point um, 20, um, 9.03, which is right there as well. All right. So you can use more points if you like, but you don't have to. Um, at what temperature will the speed of the reaction reach 15 units? So using technology, we're going to graph this again. We know that when is V of T equal to 15? So when does 5 times 1.0 T equal 15? Now, once again, I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to deal with the window first because that's the easiest way. Um, my X is from 0 to, what's that, 25? Scale is 5. My Y is from 0 to 12. The scale is 2, okay? Now I'm gonna hit Y equals and just change these things. My original equation is five times 1.03 carat X, enter, and my number here is clear, 15, enter, and I hit graph. And right away, I get a cool looking graph right here. I'm getting the same graph on my page. All right, now, uh-oh, that's not good. Should it be hitting there? No. Oh, I put five instead of 15. See? Because I checked my answer and I go, that makes no sense. And I go, now it makes sense. What do I do here? Why isn't it fitting? Window. Y max is 12. 
Uh, what are we at? 15 units. Okay, so I'm not using that one. I'm just go 20. All right, and then I make my scale five. Because notice it didn't fit in my initial graph, and it's not going to fit on on the graph we're using there either. It should. What's going on here? 15. Oh, and V of T equals 15. So now look at the graph doesn't even fit there. Oh man, my window. Uh, X max. I'm going to make I don't know 50. 51 doesn't matter. So look at. Sometimes you just have to keep on adjusting this. This is why I'm doing this, just to show you how annoying it gets sometimes. There we go. Got an intersection. That's all I need. Second calc. Intersection. Now we can get to work. Enter, enter, enter. Three enters. And it brings me there. And it tells me that when y equals 15, x is approximately 37.16 or 37.2. All right. Let's go check our answer. And our answer says, there's our graph. About 37.2. 37.2 degrees Celsius. All right. Yeah, got it. All right, next problem, number five. What you're gonna do here is find the number of people initially infected with a flu virus that spreads through school. The number of people N infected after T days is given by N equals four times 1.332 to the T, where T is to be greater than zero. Meaning you can't go back in time. Initial number of people infected. We should be good at this now. That's when t equals zero, initial, right? Four times one in 332,000 to the zero. Four times one is four. So there are four people initially affected. Now watch how crazy viruses are, especially with COVID, same, same basic concept. Calculate the number of people after 16 days. So after one day, there's only 14 people. Let's see after 16 days. Four times, so t now equals 16. 1.332 to the 16th power is 393. So after the first day, there's four. 16 days, there's three, almost 400 people now infected. Whoa, that's a lot. Now there's 1,200 people in the school. Estimate the time it will take for everybody in that school to catch the flu. We have to use our calculator. So you're gonna set this equation. Four times 1.332 to the t. Okay, that's going to be 1. And then your second equation is going to be 1,200. So 4 times 1.332 to the t times 1,200. I'm just going to put this up here instead of going through all the calculations. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. All right. Second calc, number 5, intersect. Enter, enter, enter. We'll just pretend like we went over there. X is 19.895 or approximately 19.9. So it takes about 20 um, 19.9 days or about 20 days for the entire school to be infected. So to go from 400 people to 1,200 people, it only took about four more days. That's crazy. Would that happen in real life? Not necessarily because people will stay home sick. Some people are immune and stuff like that. But this is general ideas if there are no outliers. Now, for what value is it reasonable to for this model? For what value is it take? So T should be between what two numbers to make this model work? And those numbers are up here. You should have said, well, there's 1,200 people in the school, okay? And it takes about 19.9 days for all of them to catch the flu. So that's the highest it's gonna be, right? And the lowest it could be is zero days. So from zero to 19.9 days. Because after 19.9 days, there are no more people left in the school. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. All right. I think we're making good progress. Number six, in 1998, 200 bears were introduced to a large island. That's pretty cool. This island was off, um, a large island off Alaska. Previously, there are no bears. The population increased exponentially. According to B of T, bears time, equals the original amount of bears, B of O, um, plus A, subscript O, to the T power, where A is obviously greater than zero. Um, and is a constant, and T is the time in years since the introduction. So this is going by years. All right. So the first thing. 
find B is zero. That's pretty easy. What was the initial amount of bears? 200. B is zero equals 200. Okay, now if I do it like this way, B of zero equals A, the time is zero, equals 200, right? The initial amount is 200. So B of zero times one means 200. There was initially 200 bears. How do we know? The word problem says it. Do you have to do all this work? No, I don't know why the book does it. 200 bears introduced. That's how you know. B. In 2000, there's 242 bears. Find A now and interpret your answer. All right, so now we have the equation. How many years was it from 2000 to the initial in 1998? So this is the initial time, right? So this is like, um, everything is from here. So to get from 1998 to 2000, that is two years, okay? So T would be two. So when you're entering your stuff in, B of T we know now equals 200 times A of T. How? Because our B of O is 200. All right, so this is the equation that we're gonna base everything off of. All right, so B of two equals 200 times A squared. All right, is there anything else we know? What is B of two equal? After two years, how many bears were there? 242. So we know B of 2 equals 242. So 242 equals 200 times A squared. We can use this information now to find A and have a great model. Solve for A squared. You're going to divide both sides by 200. And to solve for A, you're going to take the square root. Now the square root of 220, 242 divided by 200 is approximately 1.1. So if A is 1.1, is the number of bears increasing or decreasing every year? How much is it increasing by? Well, if this 1 is 100%, this 1 is a 10%. So it's increasing by 10% each year. Now, we can use that info to really go to town on this problem. Find the expected bear population in 2018. We could do this now, because now we have a quality um, equation to use. 2018, what would our T be? Well, if it's originally 1998, 2018, sorry, 18 minus 1998 is 20 years. So our T is 20. And what's our equation? 200 times 1.1 A to the T. So B of 20 equals 200 times 1.1 to the 20th power. Okay. B of 20 equals 1,350. So about 1,350 bears are there after 20 years. You're just starting with 200, after 20 years you're up to over, after, sorry, 200, you're up to over 1,300 bears. Find the expected percentage increase in population from 2008 to 2018. Okay, so from those two years, what is the expected increase in population? Then how long will it take the population to reach 2000? All right, the first one. Uh, from 2008 to 2018 is how many years? 10 years, okay? So, T equals 10. Okay? Um, now, that tells us how many bears will be from 2008 um, 1998 to 2008, and we already know the increase from 1998 to 2028. So now we just have to find the first one. B of T equals 200 times 1.1 to the, oh, so that should say 10. All right. B of 20, we already discussed before, right? 20 years, because that's from 2018 to 1998. 
That equals um, 200 times 1.1 times to the 20th. What do we do with these two things? Good thing they're colored, because otherwise this would make no sense. There we go. So we have our B of 20, B of 10, B of 10. Okay, you wanna know how much it's increasing by? Because we want to know the percent increase from 2008 to 2018. I think I did this wrong again. Uh, let me calculate. This should be a 10. And it increases by approximately 159%. Okay. Pretty simple. Next one, how long will it take the population to reach B of t equals 2,000, all right? 2,000 equals 200 times 1.1 to the t. If you put your two graphs together, I don't need to keep on showing you guys how to do the graphing because you're good at it by now, hopefully. All right, you have them equal each other, intersect, intersect, and you get t is approximately 24.2. So about 24.2 years. That's it. Okay. This I think is the tenth too down here. Right. Let's go seven. Kayla deposited 500 euros into an account. The amount in the account increases by 8% each year. Write a formula for the amount in time in the account after t years. All right. So what do we know? A of t equals your initial amount. Okay, so this is like you could say um, the amount initial. So this is your initial. Okay, increased by 8% is 108%, which is 1.08, and each year is your t. T is the number of years since Kayla deposited the five thousand dollars. Five thousand euros, sorry. Find the amount after two years and five years. So use this equation to plug these two things in. Um, a of two equals five thousand times one point oh eight um, squared, which is fifty-eight thirty-two. So there's five thousand eight hundred thirty-two euros in the account after two years. Five years, a five equals five thousand times one point oh eight to the fifth, which is seven thousand three hundred forty six point six four. There is seven thousand three hundred forty six point six four euros in the account after five years. Right? Pretty simple. Sketch the graph. Two over almost six thousand up. Um, five over seven thousand up and then zero over 5,000. I kind of went out of order there, sorry about that. You get it though. Um, that's it. There's your graph. Notice the nice little curve back. All right. A house is expected to increase in value by about 7.5% a year. Its expected value in t years is in time as given by the exponential model v equals k a to the t dollars, where t has to be greater than zero. Time is always positive, or equal to zero. The model is graphed alongside. State the value of a. So the first thing we're going to do is find the value of a. There's a couple things to do here, but firstly, find a. All right? We're going to use this stuff. We have two points here to help find this. So, 
v of k times a to the t dollars and t is greater than or equal to zero. That's how we're starting. So what does this mean? The value is what each year? The value is increased every year by 7.5%. So what's our multiplier going to be? What's our multiplier going to be? Not 0 0.075, but since it's increasing, it's going to be 100 plus that, right? So because it's increasing by 7.5 every year, that means it's going up 107.5% every year. So we just convert that to a decimal and you get 1.075. So our V is K times 1.05 the T. All good? Uh, find the value of k and interpret your answer. So we already know that v equals k times 1.05 to the t power, right? Because we found out what a was before. So what do we do next? What do we do next? Boom. You guys are solving the question. Alright? When t is 1, v is 387,000. How do we know? Because we have a point there, right? Okay, so we're going to use that. Keep working. So what do we do? Plug it in. When you plug it in, this is your V, this is your T. Anything to the first power is itself. So this times K equals 387,000. Divide 387,000 7, by 1 and 75 thousandths. And that gives you your K is 360,000. Right. So our equation now, the original value of the house was 360,000. Look at that. You can go backwards and find answers forward answers. How long will it take for the house's value to reach 550,000? So in this case, you're going to have to use, what? You're going to have to use a, what are you gonna have to use? Graphs. So V equals 367,000, 360,000 times one and 75,000 to the T, when V equals 5,500, right? So, what are we doing here? Make our graph, right? So we're gonna set, we're gonna graph two pieces and then we're gonna find the intersection of those pieces. Here's our graph. As you can see in our graph, um, what we have here is we graph 550,000. I set my um, windows from, my X's were like zero to seven. My Y's were from like zero to like 700,000 because I wanted to be a little bit above here. I want to graph the two, intersect, intersect. The answer is about 5.88, wait, sorry, 8602 or about five and 86 hundredths. So about 5.86 years. Any questions? Any questions? That was an easy one. Awesome. Nine. Biologist is modeling an infestation of fire ants. Ooh, fire ants are nasty. He determines that the area affected by the ants is given by a to the n equals k 1.5 to the n times c hectares. Remember, 100 acres. Where n is the number of weeks after the initial observation. So first we had grasshoppers, now we have fire ants. K and c are constants. We're going to use our technology to find out what K and C are. So here's what, here's what we know. We know there's a point at 3. Um, we know there's a point here. And we know there's a point there. So we have two points. We have our origin point, And we have our point that we know is at um, 3, 580. Okay, so we're going to use those points to find our answers. 
So first thing we know is a v n equals k times 1.5 to the n. So we're going to find k and we're going to find c. Okay. So what do we do first? We're going to have to create a um, systems of equations to solve this. Let me give you that. Hmm? So using this um, first graph, this hits a 200 right here. So that's 0, 200. So when n is 0, a is 200. So we can plug that into this equation. 200 equals k times 1.5 to the 0 plus c. 200 equals k. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So 200 equals k plus c. That's our first equation. All right? Now we're going to go over 3, 580. So when n is 3, a is 580. See, I make simple little mistakes like this, little errors. 580. All right, so 580 equals k times 1.5 cubed. That's what I'm over here sometimes. I'm just fixing up my, my notes. 580. 580 equals k times 1.5 cubed plus c. 1.5 cubed, type in your calculator, is 3 and 3 eighths. So 580 equals 3 and 3 eighths k plus c. Can't solve for k, right? Because we have plus c. So what do we do next? Solve using systems of equations. You're going to plug your stuff into your calculator that way. I know, you might have forgot how to do this. Let me go over here and help you out. All right, so little help here for you. I'm always pretending like you guys forget, which I know you don't, but find system of equations. You hit the apps button. Apps right here, next to math. You go down to our number nine, P-L-Y-S-M-L-T-2. You go to number two, simultaneous um, equation solver. Uh, two equations, two unknowns. Hit next. Boy, I had something here from before, but it's not the one I need. So on the first one, it's k plus c equals 200. So 1 plus 1 equals 200. The second one is 580. Okay, so we've got 3.375 k plus 1, oops, plus 1c equals 580. All right, so we've got our stuff all in there. Solve button right there. And it tells x is 160, y is 40. I think that's right. Let's hope it. I've been actually getting really lucky. Not lucky, but very good. So we do this. K is 160. C is 40. All right? Because I use this as X, this is Y. Right? So 160 and 40 is our answer. Now we're going to use this information to solve some more stuff. Now, what we know is, we know that K is 60, 160, and C is 40. How do we know that? We just did that. So we could rewrite our original equation as a to the n equals 160 times 1.5 to the n plus 40. Now we have a good equation. We could type in anything we want for n and find out the area damage, or we could do a system, uh, we could do the graphing and find the intercepts and find out how long it takes to reach certain areas. So we're going to go backwards this time. We're going to find out the amount of time it takes to reach this area. So when a to the n equals 1,000, that means 1,000 is going to equal all this stuff. So 1,000 equals 160 times 1.5 to the n plus 40. All right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to graph this. I'm going to make this my y1, my blue graph, and this my y2, my red graph. Type it in. I fool around with my windows until I get, oh, you know what? I'm going to make this um, 0 to 5-ish, and my y is from 0 to 1,400. All right? How do I know that? Well, I just want to be above a thousand. So the key is with your y's, that's the easy one. Just be above the number that's right here. For your x's, you got to kind of fool around with that. Intersect, so you do second calc, or second trace to get calc. Enter, enter, enter. 4.419. So that goes up to 4.42 approximately. That's your n, which is the number of weeks. So it takes approximately 4.42 weeks. That's about four weeks and four days. Wait, no, four weeks and three days. Right? 0.4277. Yeah, about three days. Right? Last growth. Last problem of this set. 
And then we're at the halfway point. Parachuter jumps from a basket of a stationary hot air balloon. That seems dangerous. The speed of descent is given by the expected value in t years time is given by the exponential model v equals c minus k times 0.8 to the t meters per second to the negative one, where c and k are constants and t is the time in seconds. Okay, first thing I want you to do, explain why c equals k. Why does c equal k? All right, well, when t equals zero, right, your initial time, right, before you jump, v equals c minus k times 0.8 to the zero, right? What's your initial velocity when you jump? That's also zero, right? So v equals c minus k. But your velocity equals zero when your time is zero, right? Because before I jump, I'm getting ready to jump, I'm not moving. I'm still, right? And then I jump. So before I move, I'm sitting there, not moving. Velocity is zero times zero. So zero equals c minus k. Therefore, add k to both sides, c has to equal k. See, by just taking common sense, you can figure this out. Now, after two seconds, the parachute has a speed of 21.6 meters per second. Find the exponential model now connecting v and t. Now I'm going to tell you one thing. We're going to have to use this. What do we know is possible? We know that c and k are equal, right? So use that little bit of information. You only need to use one of them. You can either use both c's or both k's, but you don't need both of them. Are we good? All right, so what do we know? We know that v equals c, which is k, right? I place the c with the k because they're equal, minus k times 0.8t. And it doesn't matter if you put c's here because they equal the same thing anyway. After two seconds, the speed is 21.6. So when t equals two, right, your v equals k minus k to the 0.8 squared. 0.8 squared is 0.64. Now in v of two, right, when time is two, your velocity is 21.6, right? So 21.6, you can plug that in for v, equals k minus 0.8 squared is 0.64 k. Well, what's 1 minus 0.64? 21.6 equals 3600 k. Divide both sides by 0.36. 21.6 divided by 0.36, k equals, it's actually an even number, 60. Now, if k equals 60, what is c equal? 60. Now, oh, I didn't write the exponential model. Because k is 60, okay, that also means what else? C is 60. So here's the model. V equals 60 minus 60 times 0 0.8t. There you go. That's pretty cool, pretty easy, right? Pretty cool. I hate how I say pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. You all good? Let's go to the next one. What I want you to do next is first find my rags. I can erase this. Find the speed of the parachutes after four seconds. So we know the equation. I didn't write it up there. What I said before is the equation was um, v of t equals 60 minus 60 times 0.8t. So after four seconds, what you do is you're going to plug that into the equation. All right. And then you plug in the equation. What do you guys an answer? 60 minus 60 times 0 0.8 to the fourth power is 0 0.4096. 60 minus that is 35.424. So what is that though? That is your what? 
Does it tell us? That's your speed. 35.4 meters per second. All right. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sketch the graph. Do that real quick. You're sketching the graph. You got this. All right, so we have our point. Um, our first point we know is zero, zero. We also know four, 35.4. So now we have our little curve here. And we can um, figure out there. Now, why is my curve doing this? What do you think that means? Now, is that speed varying over time? What's going on here? Why is that like that? Why is that like that? Well, from the graph, the parachute accelerates rapidly until he approaches his terminal velocity. What's his terminal velocity? 60. How do we know it's 60? Well, look at it. It's 60. Right there. 60 minus 60 is zero. So um, the velocity reaches the terminal velocity at 60 meters per second. That means you can't go any faster. You go down, 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 you don't just increase in speed forever. You reach a speed where you stop increasing. Okay. And that is that. Okay. Any questions? Any questions or concerns? Pretty easy, right? Hopefully. That concludes our thing. Now there's a puzzle here. Um, you mean like, you're like, why? What, what kind of puzzle are we gonna do? We're not gonna do the puzzle. But um, what the puzzle is explaining is, um, the population of insects doubles in size every week and exhausts its food supply chain after six months. At what time does three quarters of the food remain? So you, we could set up an equation and solve this that we'll probably do in class, but I'm not gonna go over it because this is more of a group exercise, okay? So. And we have a lot of stuff to cover. We have officially reached halfway through this current lesson. Um, oops, sorry, that's my finger. I just want to see how long it's been. Hour and 20 minutes. So hopefully I can take out the next one in an hour. What we're going to do next is decay. Um, 140. Oh, I hope I can do this in an hour. I don't want to stay after school. All right, so um, 27. Oh, we got about 20. Yeah, that's about halfway. All right, so now we're going to cover decay. Consider a radioactive substance with an original weight of 20 grams. If it decays or it goes down, reduces by 5% every year, the multiplier for this is 95% or 0.95. Okay, so it's a number less than 1. So anytime this number is 1 point something, you know it's growth. Anytime it's less than 1, you know it's decay. All right? Um, what is the weight n after n years of n? So the multiplier, so the original weight is 20 grams, right? What's W1? 20 times, well, the original weight times 0.95, which is 20 times 0.95. All right, so this number would be smaller. How much smaller? Well, if you took a calculator, I didn't actually put the answer, and I hit clear a bunch of times, took me and clear, clear, clear. Uh, I can never get back to the main menu on these calculators. Ah. Sometimes you just gotta turn them off. All right, so 20 times 0.95, 20 times 0.95, it would be approximately 19. That's not that bad. Now to go to W2. You take your W1 and you multiply that by 9.95, sorry. So that's the same as multiplying um, the original one by how many 0.95s? So W1 equals this. So this, 20, point nine, 20 times 9,500 times 9,500 is 20 times 9,500 squared. All right, so that would be about 18.05. Notice it goes down the first time, it goes down 0.95 the second time. So it goes down less and less every time. To find W3, it'd be W2 times 0.95 or 20 times 0.95 to the third power. You're doing it three times. All right, if I was going to type that in the calculator, 
That would be about 17.15-ish. What do you think these two would be? Try to see these. I want the actual answers for these. All right, so 20 times about 0.95 to the 20th, and 20 times 0.95 to the 100th. So these answers would be approximately 7.2 grams, right? And about 0.1 gram. So see how it decreases a bunch every time? Right. Okay. From this pattern, we see that. Graph the pattern real quick. Right? That's zero. And I told you the numbers already, so we're graphing these. Boom. And then here's the one that goes really far down here, 20. We obviously can't do 100. But you can see it's going down eventually and almost reaches zero. It, the thing with decay, though, is it never reaches the asymptote. It will never get to y equals zero. Nothing ever decays forever because it's going down exponentially. That's why radioactive stuff always stays radioactive even billions of years from now. Maybe significant, but insignificant, but for now. So from this pattern, we see that W equals 20 times 0.95 to the n power, right? Which again is a geometric sequence, as was um, growth. They're just opposite. Hence, we know that radioactive decay is a continuous process, so the remaining weight will actually be given by a smooth exponential curve. If I tried to make this a straight line, Notice how it doesn't work out that way, okay? It decays less and less and less. Okay, see that? The slope gets less and less and less. All right, and the curve is W to the N is 20 times, 0.95 to the N, where N is all real numbers, okay? So here we're just dealing with integers when we plotted this, and now this curve allows us to do all real numbers. So. That means not all real, not all positive real numbers. Right. Let's get to an example. You ready? When a diesel electric generator is switched off, um, the current dies away according to the formula I T. I is the always the symbol for current um, in terms of time equals twenty four times point two five T. Find I of T when T equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right, so the first one. We're going to plug these things in for T, that's it. So I of 0 equals 24 times 0.25 to the 0 power, which is 24 times 1, or 24 amps. You did the rest already? I of 1 equals 24 times... 0.25 to the first power, 24 times a quarter, 24 divided by 4 is 6 amps. I of 2, 24 times 0.25 squared, 24 times um, 0 0.0625, which is approximately 1 and a half amps. I of 3, 24 times uh, 0.25 to the third power, is 24 times 0 0.015625, which is 3 eighths of an amp. Notice 24, 6, so you're dividing by 4, you're dividing by 6, you're like dividing by 3 ish, 3.5, 4, you're dividing by 4, 4, and you're dividing by more and more every time you go down. Right? I don't know what that is. What current? flowed in the generator, what current flowed in the generator at the instant it was switched off. So when it was first switched off, how much current was there? What was your time when it first switched off? It was zero. So there you go. I of zero equals 24 amps. How do I know it's 24? You already saw it for you. All right. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Plot. Plot the graph of I of t, 4, t is greater than 0, using the information. So here's the point that we just found previously. I couldn't put both graphs up at the same time. That's the best I can do. So use that information to plot the graphs. All right. We're plotting this graph. You got there, there, there. There's the graph. Okay. 
Okay? Now, what does that tell us? Um, the next question that is asked is... Oops. Sorry, I'm multitasking here. Um, now, what we're going to do is use our graph or technology to find out how long it will take the affected area to reach 4 amps. So you're looking for 4 in that column. Now, if you're using technology, what you're going to do is you're going to use the graph. I'm going to show you that in a second again. If you're using your graph, you just run lines over it. Oh, there it is. Sorry, just looking for a charger here. Everything's about to die. Now, so what that means is, very simple, 4. Right, when this runs over, if I run 4 over here, and I run down, I get to about 1.3. Why? Because this is 1.5, and this is about 0.3 from there. It's just an estimate. It's not exact. All right. Um, if I continue on, use your graph for technology to find out um, the next part. If we use technology, technology is not too bad to use from the graph to reach about that takes about 1.3 seconds. From technology, we get about 1.29 seconds. Now, in case you forgot how the technology works, sorry about that. And if you're using your calculator, like I said before, um, all we're going to do is we're going to take the two pieces and put them together. Now, um, first thing we do is, just as we did with the last piece, we go to y equals. Okay, our equation was 24, I'm going to clear this off, sorry, 24 times um, 0 0.2, oops, 0.25 carat x, enter. This is going to be, um, how many, 4 amps, so that becomes a 4, I'm going to clear that and hit 4, enter. Okay, my window, um, my x is from uh, 0 to 4. Make my scale 1, I guess. Um, my y could be 0 to, you can have it to 10. It doesn't really matter because we're going to 4 anyway. So there's my graph. There's the other piece. Second trace. Intersect. Enter, 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 enter. And as you can see right here, my X is 1.29 seconds. All right. That's that. All right. Good. We're all back. All right. So let's go to the next piece. Problem number one. Medication is taken by a patient. It's slowly used by their body. After T hours, the amount of drug remaining is given by... D of T equals 120 times 0.9 T milligrams. Interpret the value, all right, of 0 0.9 in the model. Okay, so what you're doing there by interpreting that is saying what that value actually means. All right. Um, 1 minus 100 minus 90% equals 10%. So that 0.9 actually means the amount of drug is decreasing by 10% every hour. Right? And also, we know another important thing is when A is between 0 and 1, that's decay. Greater than 1, growth between 0 and 1, decay. Right? Find D of T when T equals these numbers. You're just plugging them into the equation. Go. All right, when T is 0. 120 times um, 0.9 to the zero power. 120 times 9 is just 120 milligrams. When D is 4, 120 times 0.9 to the fourth. And you can just type this straight in. You don't have to do the second step right here. 120 times 0.6561 is 78.7 milligrams. And I'm just showing you. After zero hours, you're at 100%. Here, you're only at 65% of your original value. That's what I did that. After 12 hours, um, 120 times 0.9 to the 12th power, that's approximately 120 times um, 28 tenths. Notice, after 12 hours, you're only about 28%. So you're at 33.9 milligrams. 24 hours, 
0.9 to the 24th power, approximately 120 times 0 0.079. So at 24 hours, you're only about 8% of your original amount that you're administered, which is 9.57 milligrams. Okay? That's the only reason I did this, just so you could see how it's changing over time. All right? Let's go to the next one. See? What was the original drug dose? The original drug dose is when you had time was zero, right? That was D of zero, which was 120 times one, which was 120 milligrams. Pretty simple. Graph D against the graph. So we're going to graph all these things we just solved. So when we're graphing these now, you're going to graph zero, 120, right? You're going to graph 4, about 79. Right? You're going to graph uh, 12, about 34. And then you're going to put one at 24 and about 9.5. And, right? Draw a graph that goes through all those points. Now we're going to use graph word technology to find out when there's only 25 milligrams of the drug left in the body. So that's when D is 25. Um, using technology, you know how to use the calculator by now, you're going to plug that in. You're going to plug in 25 um, for your Y2 and 120 times 0.9 T for your Y1. My window that I used was really from like 0 to 25 and my X's or my Y's was like from 0 to, doesn't even matter, you can go 0 to 50, it doesn't matter. I just used the same one they used here pretty much. Intersect, intersect, you get about 14.89, or about 14.9 hours, right? If you want to check your answer using your graph, if I went up and over, all right? So if I started at 25, uh, oh, I went the wrong way. 25 milligrams goes to here, all right? And 25 milligrams, right about here, all right? So if I'm checking with my graph, Here's 30, 25 is right here. All right, hits here, goes down, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, 25, 30, the weight of a radioactive substance. Um, T years after being set aside is given by WT equals 250 times 0.998 T grams. How much was initially set aside? And then you're gonna solve the rest of those. All right? Solving this problem real quick. See, initially, time is zero, right? 250 times 0.998 to the zero power. 250 times one, which is 250. So the initial amount was approximately 250 grams, right? Find that for 400, 800, and 1,200 years. W 400 equals 250 times 998,000 to the 400, 112 grams. W 800, 250 times 998,000 to the 800 is approximately 50.4, 50.4 grams. And after 1,200 years, 250 times 998,000 to the 1,200 is approximately 22.6 grams. That's two. Problem number three. Nope, still in problem two. What you're gonna do now is, all these problems are pretty large problems. You're gonna take your points and you're gonna graph your points. All right, here's your point, 0, 250, uh, 400, 112, 
800, 50.4, and 1,222.6. Try to draw a line that goes through these, or a curve. Use your graph or a graphic calculator to find out how long it takes the substance to decay to about 125 grams. Using this, 125 is about here. What's that? The 200, 350, about 350. Let's see what we get from the graph. Oh, I do it on the graph anyway. 125 goes to here, here goes to here, approximately 350. Look at that. I didn't even know I was going to do that. All right, so about 350 years from the graph. Using our technology, you're going to set WT equals 125. So 125 equals the original equation, which is 250 times 998,000 to the T. Plug them both into your calculator, y1, y2. Um, hit second calculator, hit number five, which is intercept. Hit enter, enter, enter. Your window should be, your x should be from about zero to, it doesn't matter, you can make it zero to 500 if you want. Um, this should be from about zero to anywhere over 125. You can go 200, you can go 150, it doesn't matter. When you get your answer, you're gonna get 340 point, uh, 346.22, you're rounding it to, I ran in one decimal place. I did four significant figures, I don't know why. Um, so about 346 years. All right. Then I'm back to three. Problem number three. Almost there. The current in a radio in T seconds after it's switched off is given by I of T equals 0.6 times 0 0.03 T amps. Find the initial current. What's T equal? T equals zero in the initial current. So 0 0.6 times 300 of the T. 0 0.6 times one is 0 0.6. The initial current is 0 0.6 amps. Find the current after this number of seconds. All right, after 0.1, 0.6 times 0 0.03 to the 0.1 is approximately 0.43 or 0.43 or 23, 423 thousandths of an amp. After a half a second, goes down even more. 0. Uh, 6 tenth times that is 104 thousandth of an amp. One second would be 18 thousandth of an amp which is your answers. Graph them using just A and B. 0 0.6, 0 0.1, 0 0.423, 0 0.5, 0 0.104, uh, 1, and 0.18. There's your answer. Another one down. Mm -hmm. We're going to do four. Four is two slides. There's an easy one. Let's go back to four. Uh, all these look the same, right? Just because we're doing the same thing over and over. So find the initial temperature. That's when T equals zero. Now notice right here there's a negative T up here. That's the only difference. But it doesn't matter because negative zero is still zero. So 100 times 1 is still 100. So the initial temperature was 100 degrees Celsius. So the liquid has been placed in the refrigerator at 100 degrees Celsius. Find the temperature after 15 minutes. Now, you may say, wait a second, 1.02, that's growth, isn't it? But it's 1.02 to the negative T. So 1.02, let me explain this to you guys real quick. 1.02, negative T is the same as 1 divided by 1.02 okay? okay? Now, because when you raise something to a negative power, you reciprocate it. And one divided by 1.02 is 0.98. So pretty much you're taking 98% of the temperature off each time. All right? Got it? So let's check this out. After 15 minutes, watch it go down. 
100 times 1.02 to the negative 15 is 74.3. See it go down? Now, um, guess what? If I multiplied 100, because you don't believe me, if I multiplied 100 times 0.98, which I told you to do 4 to the 15th, it's approximately 74 as well. Not exactly, because I got rid of a bunch of the decimals, but that's what I was telling you before when you're going down about 98% each time. Next one. W, so 74.3 degrees. W to the 20th, 100 times 1.02 to the negative 20th, and that's 67.3 degrees Celsius. So anytime you have a negative here, this number would have to be greater than 1 to be a decay. W to the 78, 100 times 1.02 to the negative 78, equals 21.3. So that would be 21.3 degrees Celsius. Right? See, sketch the graph. Using A and B only. 0, 100, 15, 74.3, 20, 67.3, and 78, 21.3. You can see you got. The reason I keep on having you sketching is so you can see and understand how the curves are actually working as well. All right? Part D how long will it take the temperature to fall to 15 degrees? Once again, you're just using a calculator. All right, upon using your calculator, T of T equals 15. So 100 times 1.02 to the negative T equals 15. Type in your calculator. Um, zero to about 100 is going to be your Y, your X's. Zero to about 100 could be your Y's, All right? Intercept, intercept. You get about 95.8 is your N. So it's going to take about 95.8 minutes, right, about 96 minutes. So if you want to check your answer, T is 15, go over here, what did I write there? Oh, that's about right, about 96 minutes. Pretty easy, right? Six more. An initial count of orangutans in a forest found that the forest contains 400 orangutans. Since then, the destruction of their habitat has caused the population to fall by 8% each year. Write a formula for the population P of orangutans T years after its initial count. All right, so I want you to come up with a formula for the fallen population. So it falls by 8% every year. What do you believe your multiplier is? Well, it's initially for your orangutans, right? So that's going to be our... Initial amount, that's gonna be like our K, right? Or C. And then now what's our multiplier? 400 times, that's a K, what's our A? Well, if it decreases by 8% every year, 100 subtracted by your 8%, right, would be 92% or 0.92. All right, so using our equation, the multiplier is 0.92. So the initial amount, P of T, equals 400, right, times 0.92 T to the T power. So he says, just from these words, you're able to extrapolate an equation. Now you can use it to solve. What's the population after a year? Well, that's when T equals 1. P of 1 equals 400 times 0.92. 368 right in the What about five years? P of five, 400 times 0.92 to the fifth is 264. So you can see how the number of orangutans is falling. And I didn't even give you the formula, you figured it out yourself because they told you the initial amount and they told you the multiplier. That's all there is to it. Is that very easy? Is that very easy? Is that easy? Plot the points, solve the problem. 0, 400, 1, 398. So it doesn't really, 68, doesn't really fall. 
five, 264. Okay, now we're dropping. All right, and as you can see, there's gonna be a graph like this. How long will it take the population to fall to 200? Let's estimate, 200? Should be about eight years, right? Technology always gives a better answer though. So when P of T equals 200, 400 times 0.92 T equals 200. Using our graphing calculator where my X window is about zero to 10, and then I got about zero to 400 here. Enter, enter. Let's see, 8.31, pretty good. So about 8.31 years, the population will be down to just 200 orangutans. So half the population will be decimated in about eight and a third year. That's not good. Six, the intensity of light, ooh, this is a good one, diminishes below the surface of sea. The lower you get in the water, the less light there is. That's why if you go really, really deep, all the fish look really weird, and some of them have like light bulbs on their heads, so you can see. Um, according to the formula, L equals 10 times A to the D, where A has to be greater than zero, it is a constant, and D is the depth in meters measured from the surface area of the sea. Would you expect A to be between zero and one, or greater than zero, and then explain your answer? Okay? Well, what's from zero to one? Is that growth or decay? Let's just think. From zero to one is decay. This is growth, right? So would you expect the amount of light as you go farther underwater, right, to be getting lighter, Increasing or decaying, decreasing, more light or less light? Hopefully you said less light. And the reason for that is the intensity of light diminishes, it gets less, it actually tells you that, as the depth increases. So if the intensity of light one meter below the surface is point a nine and a half units, can you find the value of A? Well, you can't do it. All right? Let's see. So when D equals 1, L equals 9.5. So 9.5 equals 10 times A to the first power. Anything to the first power is itself. So 9.5 equals 10A. A equals 9.5 divided by 10, which is 0.95. So now we have our A. Okay? Since we have our A, it means we have our actual equation. Okay? And our actual equation now is L equals 10 times 0 0.95 to the D. So use that equation to find the intensity of light 25 meters below the surface. Go. Let's go check it out. So we want to look for when D is 25. We know we just said L equals 10 times 0.95 to the D. So 25 meters below the surface. Not negative 25, 25, because D is going to be positive at all times. L equals 10 times 0.95 to the 25th. And that's about 277. So the intensity is about 2.77 units. If it started, um, where's that? So it starts at 10, the intensity. It goes all the way down to 2.77. So you could say it's also, what's that, 28% of the initial value? Okay. Light intensity of four units is considered adequate for divers to be able to see clearly. Calculate the depth corresponding to this. Now, you want to find out when L equals four. We know the equation here is 10 times 0 0.95 to the D. We found that out, right? We found our 0.95 from our A. So when L is four, four equals that equation, correct? How can we solve for this? Well, we're going to have to use our calculator. 
Okay, we're gonna use technology. We're gonna type in 10 times 0.95 to the x power. For y1, we're gonna type in four for y2. We're gonna set our window from zero to 20 for y or x and from zero to 10 for y. We're gonna hit second trace, which is calculate. We're gonna go down to number five, hit enter, enter, enter. And we're gonna x equals 17.86 or x is approximately 17.9, so that means your depth is approximately 7.9, 17.9 meters. Right. Calculate the range of depths for which the light intensity is between one and three units. All right, so now what you have to do is you have to find L is one and L is three. So you're gonna to have to use your calculator twice. So when L is three, you should have already done this, you set three equal to 10 times 0.95 to the D, now you can leave this as your Y1, and you can leave your window the same. All you're really gonna do is, actually you're gonna have to probably change your window. You're gonna have to make your X values, your X windows a lot larger. Because if I look here, and if I'm going one on my original one, it's gonna be like over here somewhere. So I probably wanna make my X like 40. But just change your Y2 to three. Your new graph looks like this. Notice, look at it, they change it to like 60. I changed it to 40, it doesn't matter. Enter, enter, you get the D is about 23 and a half meters. All right, now you go back into Y1. You know what, I'm gonna show you this in a second. L1 is one, you graph it again, you get about 44.9 meters. So the range is from between 23.5 and 44.9 meters, All right? Now to help you out, let me go do some calculator work for you. You probably don't need this, but I'll just do it anyway. Clear, clear. Okay, my Y1 is 10 times 0.95 carat X. Enter. My first one, L is four, I hit four here. I made my window of my X's. I'm just gonna make it zero to 50. Like I said, my scale is gonna be 10 because I don't like scales. My Y is gonna be from zero to five, all right? My scale is going to be 1. Graph it. This is 6D. As you can see, my graph's coming down. Come on, graph. And then my graph goes over. So this is L equals 4. Second calc. Intersect. Enter. Enter, enter, enter. You can see my answer for D right there. 17.9. Now watch how I do this easily. My next one, Y isn't four anymore. Now Y is gonna be three. So I just changed the four to a three. Hit enter. See that, didn't have to change anything else. Hit graph again. When I graph, the graph's gonna look very similar. That graph is exactly the same. Notice it's going up one, two, three now. Second there, I'm gonna hit five intersect. Enter, enter, enter. When y is three, x is 23.5. Go back to y equals. Now I'm gonna do one. Actually, and if you wanna put one in a different one, you could, I can put one down here. Graph. So now I have my range, all right? The only thing is when I do my second trace and I wanna do my intersection here, all right, enter. I want the blue graph, oh, I want this dark blue graph down here, that's one graph. Blue graph is the second graph, move over, just to make sure I get that intersection down there. And Y is one, X is 44. So see the difference between one and three? And you don't have to do it on the same graph. You can do different graphs. I just wanted to show you different ways to do it. Because what's the point of having all this technology if I'm not showing you how to use it, right? And the depth is between 23.5 and 44.9. On to number seven. Number seven states, a group of turtles was observed in a lake in 2005. The populations of turtles have decreased by 5% every year since. The graph shows the populations of turtles since 2005. Isn't that neat? All right, so first thing I want you guys to do is state the value of A. Now what you're doing is you're solving for A. Now you're gonna do that, you're gonna find A by going with what it's decreasing by. It's decreasing by 5% every year. So that means it's what percent of the original amount? 100% minus 5% is 0.95, 95%. So your multiplier A is 0.95. Bam, that's easy, isn't it? 
So what does that mean? It means that my P equals K times 0.95 to the P power. Right? Find the value of K and interpret your answer now. Sorry this looks like this, you don't want to make it fit. All right, we're going to use this point right here to find K. So when, uh, what's that? T is one, P is uh, 324, 323. 323 equals K times 0 0.95 to the first power. Okay. That's 0 0.95. 323 divided by 0 0.95 gives you K, which is what? Three hundred and forty. What does that mean? It means the initial populations of turtles was three hundred forty. There was initially three hundred forty turtles. All right. So now, look at this. We can replace this K magic with the three forty. So our new equation. Is 340 times 0.95 t. Everyone happy? Should be. That's pretty easy. All right. Move on. Find the populations of turtles in 2015. Now, the reason I left this initial problem up here was because they started in 2005. What do you think? Use the equation we just found to help solve the answers. All right, so what do we know? We know that P equals 340 times 0 0.95, sorry, the T. All right, we know that. So, how do we find the population of turtles in 2015? Well, since it initially started in 2005, the number of years it went on was 2015 minus 2005 is 10 years. So we can just make T equal 10. So we're gonna plug that into our equation. T equals 340 times 0.95 T, right? 340 times 0.95 to the 10th power, which is approximately 204. 204 what? Turtles. So after 10 years, um, the number of turtles went down from 340 to 204. So what's the difference? If they ask you the difference, subtract it to uh, 136 turtles. Less. Do you think it's a reasonable to apply this model for negative values of t? Ooh, here we go. Can you use a negative value of t, do you think? Discuss, discuss, discuss. No, why can't you use negative t? Models based on data collected since 2005. If my t was negative, we can't go back in time. It would be an extrapolation. It would be values that are 2004, 2003, 2000. We want an interpolation. We want data collected from that date until our date now. Okay, remember when we did our data sets chasing? Extrapolations is data outside the initial value set that we have. No good for us, All right? Even though technically if T was negative, the time still exists. Like if I said T was negative 10, it would be 1995, which was a year, right? You guys weren't born yet, but it was a year. I was born. Um, but it wasn't part of our data. So the graph could maybe be different then. Right. From me. Oh, eight, nine, ten. Three more. The value of a car after t years is given by the exponential model. V equals k. Um, v equals k times 0.7t plus c dollars, where K and C are constants, and T is greater than or equal to zero. The model is graphed right here. State the value of C and interpret its value based on the context of the situation. Okay, I can tell you what C is right away. It's pretty easy. But can you? 
You remember what C is? C is going to be your blank. Your blank blank. Give me a hint. All right, C, the horizontal asymptote is V equals 1,000. So C is 1,000. Whatever C is, there's always going to be a horizontal asymptote. All right? The value of a car approaches a minimum or a salvage value. Okay? That's the minimum amount they'll give you of $1,000. Okay? So that means that even if your car is in a wreck, they're going to give you $1,000 for it. Okay? Even if your car is beat up and disgusting, they're going to give you $1,000. Just because when they salvage it, they're not going to actually sell it to drive. They're just going to use whatever parts or metal was left over on that car. Right? So even after 40 years, they're going to be a thousand bucks for it. So that means that we could rewrite this equation instead of V equals K plus 0.7 T plus C. We can replace our C with a thousand. All right. What does the 0.7 mean? What's the value decrease by every year? 30%. Find the value of k now. We have a point. I couldn't fit this on here, but we're going to use this point. 3, 8,889. So find the value of k. And then find the initial value of the car. All right? So when t is 3, v is 8,889. So 8,889 equals k times 0.7 t plus a thousand, or if everyone plus a thousand. Uh oh, I messed this up. Plus a thousand. Um, 0.7 cubed is 0.343k, and this should be this minus a thousand, 7,889. All right, and what if my number's wrong? And then this is going to be 7,889 divided by 0.343. Calculator? I might have messed this problem up. And as an answer, you should have gotten, how does this look on the picture? Actually, it's not too bad. Um, 7889 divided by 0.343 equals, oh, I got the right answer, um, 2,300. Right? And that's it. Right? What is the initial value of the car? Missed that. Initial value of the car. All right. So, what you're going to do to find the initial value of the car is you're going to now have twenty-three thousand. All right. We're going to plug that in, plus 0 0.7 t plus, times 0 0.7 t times 1,000, where t is 0. So you got v equals 23,000 times 0 0.07 to the 0 power, plus 1,000. We're looking for the original amount. So v equals 23,000 times 1 plus 1,000. 23,000 plus 1,000 is 24,000. So the initial value of the car is 24,000, right? That's why the C, what the C did was, it just pretty much raised your whole graph by a thousand. Right? Not terrible, besides my mistake I made. All right, we're not done yet though. Now we're gonna go here, V equals 23,000, let me erase this off the board. Oh, there it is. Um, plus 0 0.7 plus 1,000. How long does it take for the value of the car just to reduce $5,000? Give your answer to the nearest year. How many years? So we're reducing by $5,000. So V equals 
$5,000 because V is how much it is reduced by. So V is 5,000. 5,000 equals 23,000 times 0 0.017 plus 1,000. Right? How can we solve this? Let's do some graphs. Y1, 23,000 um, times 0.7 carat X plus 1,000. Other one's 5,000 using technology. T is about 4.9 or about five years. Does the car depreciate in value by the same percentage every year? No, because what happens is the car depreciates by the same percentage each year above the salvage value of a, a thousand. Once the car gets to about a thousand dollars, it doesn't depreciate anymore. It just equals a thousand dollars. Every year before that, it goes down 70%. Once it hits $1,000 though, it just doesn't depreciate by anything. It stays $1,000 for the rest of the time. So year one, 70%, year two, 70%, three, 70%, keeps on going until it hits this $1,000, all right? Two more problems. Number nine. When a packet of peas is placed in the freezer, its temperature after T minutes is given by T of T equals C plus K times 875,000 T degrees Celsius, where after one minute and 14 and a half degrees Celsius, and after two minutes. Wait, whoa, let me, let me explain that better. Reading things out of context messes everything up. Where after one minute, okay, uh, T minutes is given by this after one minute. I think I'm missing something there. And it's 14.5 degrees after two minutes, where uh, C and K are constants. All right, there's something missing from that. Of course, that's the one of the last questions. The temperature of a packet of peas is up. Oh, that's my problem. Put a marker. I don't know. 18 degrees after one minute, or after 18 degrees, or after one minute, wait, how did you write this? The temperature of peas okay, 18 degrees after one minute, at 14.5 degrees after that. All right? Really hack that up. So we got 18 degrees after one minute, 14.5 degrees after two minutes. All right? So what they want to know is use technology to find C and K. So you guys could do that. Um, yeah. Temperature of peas is 18 degrees and 14. Well, I messed that whole entire thing up. All right. Sorry about the delay. All better. Okay. Um, just had to fix my actual Uh, my clever. Okay, so when we find this stuff out, we know that T equals C plus uh, K times 0.875T. So when T is one, after one minute, it's 18 degrees. So we're gonna set up a system of equations. 18 equals C plus K times 0.875 to the first power, which is C plus 0.875K, all right? T to the two, equals 
So 14.5 equals C plus K times um, 7 8 squared. So 14.5 equals C plus 0.765625, which is uh, 49 over 64. Okay. All right. You want to be as accurate as you could right here. That way, um, everything is much better. Okay. There we go. Fault there. Sorry about that. I had to uh, fix up the slide that you guys are going to see actually in class if you do this in class. All right. So next time. System of equations. What do you mean system of equations? <laughs> this is what happens when you have a two and some hour over a two hour lesson. Bound to be mistakes. Okay. So you're going to hit the apps button. I think I actually did pretty good for this. Apps down to nine. Systems of equations. Simultaneous equation solver. Two, two, next. All right, let's see. I got one for C. C plus 0.875, enter, equals 18. That's my first one. My second one is one C plus 0.765625, enter. And my K is 14.5. Sorry. Okay, so that's your systems of equations. Hit the solve button. Negative 10 and 32. So that means since C was my first one, C is going to be negative 10. Okay? And that means that... Um, type the stuff in. C is my negative 10 because that was my X value. And my K is 32. Yes. What do you think the temperature of the interior? What do you think the temperature is of the interior of the freezer? What do you think is the temperature of the interior of the freezer? Ooh, you can see my brain just starting to go crazy. How right did we find that? That's pretty easy. Um, well, T of T, we're going to put in our equation. Now we know that it's negative 10 plus 32, because we plugged in this for C and this for K, into our equation. So the interior of the freezer is probably a horizontal acetone, right? What is that? Like I said, that's our C. So the horizontal acetone is probably T equals negative 10. So that's gonna be the coldest it's gonna get. So that's the, te the, so the temperature inside the freezer is probably negative 10 degrees Celsius. All right? And how did I get that? I got that from my C, which I got from here. Man. That was exhausting. All right, now I'm going to use this equation, T equals T of T. I hate T of T. That gets confusing as well. Negative 10 plus 32 times 7 eighths to the T. What was the temperature of the pack of the peas when you first placed it in the freezer? That's when T is zero. Negative 10 plus 32 times that to the zero power. Negative 10 times 32, 22 degrees. So the temperature of the peas was 32 degrees when you first placed it in the freezer. After five minutes, T5, negative 10 plus 32 times 7 eighths to the fifth is approximately 6 and 41 hundredths. So the temperature of the peas is about 6.41 degrees Celsius when the peas are first placed in the freezer. I mean, uh, after five minutes in the freezer. All right? You can tell I copy paste. So this is after five minutes. 10. Temperature of the piece was about negative 1.58 degrees seconds Celsius. After 10 minutes in the freezer. All right? Any questions with this? No, we all good? Awesome. Next problem. Breath. 
Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna graph this based on these little bits of information and your asymptote. So number one, where did we say our asymptote was? We said C is negative 10. So our asymptote is at uh, degrees Celsius equals negative 10. It's always a horizontal, not a vertical. Now we can plot these points. T is zero equals 22. All right. T of five equals 6.1. T of 10 equals negative 1.58. It can go negative, that's allowed. And hug the asymptote. All right, because we have a minus 10 here, that's why it can go negative. If the asymptote, if there was no C, the asymptote would be right here. All right, so whatever this is, that's what you move everything to. How long does it take the temperature of the packet to fall to zero degrees? All right, so zero degrees Celsius, we can kind of cheat here, zero degrees Celsius. What's that, five, six, seven, eight, about nine. But we're gonna use technology. So type this into your equation. Um, this is gonna be your Y1, negative 10, plus 32 times 0.7875 T. And then you're gonna graph the graph of zero. When you do the intersection, dot, dot, you get about 8.710, or approximately eight and seven one hundredths which is about 8.71 minutes, 8 and 71 hundredths of a minute. Right. Two more slides. Here we go. Ready? Last one. The half-life of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for the substance's weight to fall to half of its original value. The radioactive isotope Fermi-253 has a half-life of three days. The weight of Fermi-253 detected T days after an explosion is W of T equals 10 times A to the T milligrams. What do you think this 10 in the diagram is? You can do the whole page, but I'm just asking for All right, so that 10 is the initial weight. The initial weight of the isotope is 10 milligrams. All right, so can we calculate now what A is to four decimal places and interpret the value? So let's look at some information. First bit of information I wanna look at is, where did I put my pointer, which I lost, so well, I gotta use this point. Fermium has a half-life of three days. It says right here, fermium has a half-life of three days. After three days, the weight is what? Well, if its initial weight is 10, what's its weight after three days? Half of 10, what's half of 10? Five. So the weight after three days is five milligrams. So what does that tell us? That gives us a point, okay? So our point is gonna be then, after, uh, where is it? After three days, the weight is five milligrams. So now I know um, W of three, equals five. I got myself a point. Because I got myself a point, what can I do? I can plug that point in there and solve for A. Three, W of three equals 10 times A to the three, right? What does W of three equal? Five. So five equals 10 A to the third. Five, uh, divide by 10, A to the A cubed equals five over 10 or one half. You're going to cube root one half and get A. A is approximately then 0.7937, right? So I'm decreasing, right? How much am I decreasing? Five. One minus 0.7937 is 0 0.2063. So what that means is each day the isotope's weight decreases by 20.63%, right? Because that's what our A means. All right, tells us decay, tells us how much of decay is five. Ready to finish strong? All right, let's finish strong. W equals, and here's our formula, 10 times 0 0.07937 T. Find the weight of fermium after two days. That's an easy one. Look at TN. W of two equals 10 times 0.7932 squared, about 6.30 or 6.30 milligrams. All right, you wanna finish strong? Let's finish strong. I'm gonna, help. I'm gonna finish using my calculator too. 
How long will it take the weight to fall to? Three milligrams. Yep, WT equals three. Therefore, three equals, you got it, uh, 10 to the times 7937 to the third probable, to the T. Wow, I just totally hacked up trying to say that. All right, so I'm going to calculate. I'm going to hit Y equals. Go, you can grab with me. You want me to do it with you? I'll go right on the screen. Finish, like I said, finish strong. Finish with you guys, right? It's like when the coaches run with the kids. All right, Y1. Whoops, Y1 equals 10 times 0.7937 carat X. Enter, and that's three. Enter. All right, let me go do a window here. My X max, I don't know, let's go with uh, 10. I'm just gonna guess 10 here. Uh, my Y, my scale is gonna be, I don't know, two. My Y minimum, zero. My Y max is, uh, what do you wanna make Y max? Uh, five looks good. Graph. Let's see what we got here? Oh, is that gonna hit? There's the one. All right, good. Look at that. Second trace, I'm gonna hit the number five for intercept. Enter, enter, enter. What do I got there? I got, when y is three, x is 5.21, 5.21. Let's go check this out, see if that's what they got. By they, I mean me. There's my graph, 5.21, look at my little red dot. All right, so T is approximately 5.21 or 5.21 days. Now, when you're dealing with 1.25, you're doing the same thing, you're just changing your Y to 1.25. So I take my calculator again. Look at this, I keep it right here. I'm gonna keep, keep everything the same. Hopefully it works out well. If my window doesn't, oh well, Y. And the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Y2. And now it's 1.25, enter, graph. Let's see, please intersect. I want to just end this lesson. This is over the two hour mark by now. Woo, barely does it, but it does it. So that's good enough for me. Second graph, and I don't really care what it looks like. I just want to be able to intersect it. Graph, graph, graph. I was able to hit it there and it tells me that. My answer is X equals when Y is 1.25, X is 8.99999. So approximately 9.0. All right, so looking at these answers, Pop that up there, 9.0, about nine days. All right, so fermium keeps on falling, on falling, on falling. Boom. All right, so after a long, arduous lesson, or actually a double lesson, we were able to figure out a couple things. How to do growth, how to do decay. How to use the calculator to solve it. So, you guys are experts now. And I'm going to leave it at that. So, see you next lesson.